Hey again, Ben Beck here bringing you the 20th, yes, the 20th installment of the Next Level Showcast on the rapidly growing Next Level Radio. In addition to weekly box office results, Next Level News, and Weird of the Week, find out some weird and oddly specific MPAA warnings for some of your favorite movies that we talked about on this episode of the Showcast. We also talked about an interesting article discussing what color you should wear in a job interview. What color of shirt means what when you go in. Uh, Plus, we had two more fantastic interviews to recap. David Hofflin from NBC's Crossbones and one of my personal favorite interviews, Mr. Kevin Murphy from Riff Tracks and Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh, Full interviews can be found on our site, www.nextlevelradioonline.com, facebook.com slash nextlevelradioonline. We we want to... uh, urge you to like us there follow us on twitter at nxt level radio and be sure to subscribe to us on itunes and youtube one last note before we get going with this podcast of the showcast we just want to remind you about our new show new show is going to be starting on next level radio this week premiere week we have adam's primetime fantasy football going to be coming this wednesday seven o'clock eastern standard time and also my all request radio rock thursdays weekly thursdays starting at seven o'clock eastern standard time until 10 o'clock standard Eastern Standard Time. So be sure to tune into those. Be sure to tune into our show every Sunday, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, live till 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And until then, here it is, the 20th installment of the Next Level Showcast. It is Sunday, June 1st. And it is time for another Next Level Showcast here on Next Level Radio. Uh, I am Ben Beck, joined as always by my co-host Adam Gorey. Yes, a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. Yes. Yes. Uh, we were supposed to have Kristen. Or Kristen. Where the hell did I get Kristen from? It's Kristen. I don't know. We were supposed to have Lauren on again today, but she bailed. Uh, she, I think she had some sort of family-ish uh, emergency type of thing. That's what they always say. <clears throat> yeah, well. Family emergency, yeah. I'm washing my hair, <laughs> something. <laughs> I think you're talking about why people uh, back out on dates. I think this is a little different. Uh, all right, well, you know, to each their own. <laughs> backing out on dates, backing out on doing a radio show, it's the same damn thing. It's kind of the same, yeah. It's like a date. <laughs> No, not really, because she's mad. Yeah, so no, I'm not let's, gonna say. Yeah, let's not, like, let's not let's not let's not give wrong impressions here. No, and we don't go on a date once a week. That'd no, be weird. No. <laughs> um, let's just clarify and rewind for a second and uh, start and over. Yeah. Anyway, it's Welcome Sunday. Welcome to June, the Next Level Showcast on Next Level Radio. <laughs> it's June first. Uh, we're into the new month, approaching summer. And yeah, we're still going strong. Two interviews that we're going to recap in this particular show. Both, of, both are actually which were a lot of fun. Yes. Both interviews this past week were a lot of fun. Um, I'm also very excited for the ones we have coming up this week. Yeah, I know at least one of them um, I'm really excited for. It's actually a reschedule. We were supposed to have him on uh, back about a month or two ago, and something yeah. happened. Yeah, we were working out a schedule thing, and then something came up, and then we had to wait. But we finally got him, so yeah. We'll let you know who we'll that talk is. about that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll let you know who that is a little bit later on in the show. We will recap our big summer contest and how you can get entered into, into that if you're not already, and if you are, how you can earn additional entries into that contest, uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Like I said, recapping both of the interviews we had this past week, letting you know about two more we have coming up this week, and it is premiere week for Adam and I. We've got two new shows premiering on Next Level Radio this week. Uh, we'll tell you about them both a little bit later on in the show. But for right now, what do you say we go into the box office for the weekend? Yep. And what do you have for us this week? Uh, opening up at number one, Maleficent, the new Disney film with Angelina Jolie, bringing in an even, according to this at least, this list, $70 million. In that's, its not, first that's, a, week. that's a pretty strong opening. 
Yeah, I think uh, X Men was like ninety one last week, somewhere around there. Yeah. So I mean, the fact that it's only about twenty away from that, and you know, X Men it was ninety point eight last week. Um, you know, that's a huge opening itself. Anytime you even approach a hundred mil, is ridiculous. Well, I think this uh, movie. I think this movie had two big selling points. One, it was Disney. So I mean, right. that that's definitely something that's going to bring in money. But the other one was Angelina Jolie. I think that was a big selling point for a lot of people. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of women who don't like her because she broke up uh, Brad and, and uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston. Aniston view her as a villain anyway. Yeah, so it's just rather fitting that she's playing one in a movie. <clears throat> Only a 51% on Rotten Tomatoes, per the critics. Uh, I, 77 I, per the I, I think it's a critic-proof movie, to be honest with you. I saw it uh, earlier today. Um, I liked it. It was. It's just, if you're... You know, if you're going to go see it and you're really attached to the original, you're probably not going to like it that much. You have to go in with an open mind. I'll say that. I guess that's one of the, re- one of the main reasons why it's probably at 51%. Yeah, probably. Um, so opening, or not, sorry, not opening, number two. Uh, second week, number two, dropping back a spot. X-Men Days of Future Past with 32.6 mil. Uh, third, opening at third, A Million Ways to Die in the West, the new, uh, Seth MacFarlane movie. Not, 17. It, it, go ahead. The 17 mil. Oh. Not a lot of, uh, great reviews for this one. No, and you know what? 17 is not a good number either. But you know what, though? Mil. Comedies are very, I don't know, comedies are very weird when it comes to the ratings. Because I know there's a couple comedies that have uh, gotten horrible ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. That I absolutely love. Well, Neighbors, the Zac Efron one, and it's when it opened a few weeks ago, uh, brought in 25 mil in its first week. So I mean, eight mil less than that. Blended, the Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore one brought in 14 last week, so it's only three mil more than that. So that's not a great sign. I, I still want to see it. Oh, I absolutely want to see it. I've read um, a couple uh, ratings, one especially from Entertainment Weekly, saying that the movie is hysterical. So I, I don't know what is gonna what is causing these critics to, you know, to give it this horrible rating. I think what it is is Seth MacFarlane is one of those people that you either love or you hate. Yeah, Th- there's no, yeah. there's really no in between with him. And he doesn't do a whole lot of acting per se, especially. He does voiceover acting, but he doesn't do a whole lot of like himself acting. This yeah. is one of his first. Well, this bigger... is the first time he's made himself the leading man. Right. Um, and it has a 33% by the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, 52 per the audience. So even the audience is not that great, but you know I what? still want to see it. I, I still want to see it, and it's one of those things. Like I said, Seth MacFarlane is one of those people you either love or you hate. Me, personally, Did you like Ted? I loved Ted. Okay, yeah, so I, I'm, th- I'm expecting something similar to that. and You know, some people, I'm sure, didn't like Ted. Yeah, I loved Ted. I love, I'm a big Family Guy person, and when it comes to Seth MacFarlane, I love Seth MacFarlane. I think he's... I think he's extremely talented. I think he's very smart. I mean, yeah. he, he doesn't just do the comedy stuff. Like, he's an executive producer on Cosmos, too. So he does yeah. a yeah. lot of intelligent stuff other than just the family guy. But he's I, – I actually have his album. His album is fantastic. He's a very talented singer. Um, and he's a crooner. So, I mean, he does a lot of older covers of, you know, stuff like Sinatra tunes and stuff like that. Right, and, and I mean he do, he uses that in uh, Family Guy. In Family Guy, yeah, he's singing all the time. I thought um, when I thought when he was the roast master for two of the Comedy Central roasts, he was great. Who, uh, did he, who was he the roast master for? He was the roast master for Charlie Sheen and Donald Trump. Okay, I don't know if I saw. I think I saw Charlie Sheen's. I don't think I saw Donald Trump. And he was fantastic. He was he was great. Um, yeah, I mean the movie has a great cast. Anything with MPH in it, I mean you gotta yeah. Patrick Harris, you gotta gotta go see that. Yeah, exactly. Let's be serious. Um, dropping back a couple spots to number four, Godzilla with another twelve point two mil, and its third week it's grossed over a hundred and seventy four million. So pretty good. Yeah, still um, bringing in cash. Yeah, I, I mean. Obviously, two different kinds of movies, but X Men in two weeks has brought in over one sixty two. But I mean, that movie is just fantastic. I think that, I think more people were anticipating X Men than yeah. than Godzilla. 
Yeah, I think people just wanted to see Godzilla so they could erase their minds of the 98 version. <laughs> um, dropping back a couple spots as well, Blended, that is still in the top five. Surprisingly. Um, just barely, with yeah. 8.4 mil in its second week. And then getting kicked out at top five was Neighbors and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 hung in there for a while, though. Uh, yeah, fifth week. This is his fifth, so I mean four weeks in the top five, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it hung, in, it hung in there. Only 192 million. I would have thought it would have eclipsed 200 by now. I still haven't seen it, so maybe that's partially why. Maybe once I go see it, it'll get over that 200. Yeah, so you're a slacker. Yeah. <laughs> I've been watching all these other movies that have been coming out. I think you're it gonna, was one of those... I was going to say, you know, if you want to help it get over that 200 million mark, I think you're going to have to see it a couple times. Yeah, just a few. Yeah. But, I mean, the what happened was is that, that I missed out on seeing it when it opened. And I was like, oh, I got to go see that. I got to go see it. And then, like, all these other movies started coming out. You know no, what no, I mean? No, no, no. Godzilla, you, you X-Men, now you, Maleficent. You don't have to give me excuses. Just apologize to Andrew Garfield and and uh, Emma Stone. And, and You said you didn't think it was that great, right? No, I thought it, it was, was good. good. I never yeah. said I didn't think it was that great. Well, you don't think it's great. You think it's good. I think it's good. But not great. It's not, like, fantastic clutch in my chest. Oh, my God, I can't believe it's that good. Great when I walked out of the What was theater. better, that or Godzilla? Uh, see, you're talking, you're talking know, sticks and stones here. It's ar- Oranges and apples. But... Yeah. Apples but, I mean, if you... If... Yeah, right. Apples and spiders. Arm if you were... <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you had to... Like, if, they... if somebody said to you, let's watch a movie. Let's watch Godzilla or Amazing Spider-Man 2. Which would you want to watch? I'd probably watch Spider-Man 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Godzilla was good, but I think it's, I think it's a it's a one and done. Like I said. Yeah, we talked we talked about it. I mean, there wasn't enough monster action going on. No. So. So opening this week, uh, this coming week, June sixth, Friday, Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, Bill Paxton's even in that one. He's in a lot of stuff. I'm hearing good things. You are. I, I don't know what the rating is so far on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but from people I know who have gone to see screenings of it, uh, I'm actually hearing decent things. I'm not hearing really? like spectacular things, but I'm hearing decent right. things. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Tom Cruise movies have not done well of late. It's got a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, though. A 95%? Yeah. Well, then there you go. Now, like we always say, it doesn't always mean it's going to be good or bad, but that's a good sign. Yeah, true. Uh, also coming out, a uh, drama romance, The Fault in Our Stars with Shailene Woodley and a couple other people that I'm not sure of. Laura Dern's in it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I read the spoiler on this one. This one's based off a book, and I read the spoiler. Oh, really? So I already know how it ends. I don't need to see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any interest in seeing it either. Yeah. Uh, Obvious Child with Jenny Slate, Jake Lacey, Gabby Hoffman, and Gabe Liebman. Comedy romance coming out. Oh boy, that's really about it. I don't know if I even want to read the rest of these. <laughs> yeah, if that's if that's if those are the ones you're coming up with after yeah. uh, Edge of Tomorrow, then there's really not much. Edge of Tomorrow is all you got. I'll, I'll, I'll real quick run down the rest of them. I'm not going to explain any of them. Uh, Borgman, B O R G M A N. Uh, it looks like it could be a film festival indie film or something like that so it could be pronounced differently i'm not sure uh super mensch the legend of chef gordon that's actually uh, not, that's not gordon, that's chef mike gordon. myers that's mike myers directed, directed yeah. mike myers movie yeah yeah and tom arnold's in it michael douglas is in it that's actually one I'm, i might actually see not in theaters but uh potentially dvd okay is it a theater, like, is it a wide release? or No, I think it's limited release. I was going to say, I, I haven't heard much about it. Um, we we have the listing of it in our possible screenings, but... Um, oh, was it in there? Okay. Yeah, but I don't know if I'll, if I'll take advantage of the screening. I know, uh, yeah. I'll check it out when it comes to DVD. Also coming out this week, Anna, and another one, The Sacrament, and lastly, Trust Me, which, trust me, is a Clark Gregg-directed, Clark Gregg-starring film. Really? Comedy, yeah. So it's uh, it's no Coulson drama. No. Okay. It is no Coulson. Drama. I I actually saw another movie with with him. Um, a, directed by um, ah oh crap, who's the guy that directed Avengers? I I should know this because oh Joss Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon. Um, he did a version of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. 
and it had a tremendous cast to it. Uh, it was set in modern day, but the the dialogue was definitely. Did you from just the watch that because Fillion's in it? Uh, no, I, I watched it for multiple reasons. I watched it because of Clark Gregg. I watched it because of Nathan Fillion, and I watched it because it's Joss Whedon. Okay. So Say and no he more. he brought back a bunch of people that he's worked with before. So a, a lot Joss. of people that I knew, yeah. Uh, he okay. brought, there's people from Buffy in it. There's people from Angel in it. People from uh, Doctor Horrible, Sing Along Long, which is Fillion. Well, uh, the, and Clark this Craig. trust this trust me one the one Clark Gregg directed has a pretty good cast itself. I mean, it has Allison Janney's or Allison Janney's in it, William H Macy, Amanda Peet. Molly Shannon. You know, I think I saw the trailer for this, and if I remember correctly, it actually does look pretty good. So I, I don't know. I have yeah, to double check. The trailer. I have to check it out. Yeah. Struggling yeah. agent for child actors and former child star himself. I have Howard seen Howard it. Holloway. I have years losing his most talented clients. Too. I have Slip. seen the. I have seen the trailer. Now that you read the synopsis, I have seen the trailer, and it does look good. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I, this might not be another wide release one, but I'll have to see if I can look into it yeah. a little bit. Uh, but that that's it for this week. Now, we haven't done this in a while, and I, I keep forgetting. But looking you know, looking at these movies, any of them that you think will hit the top five, I would guess Edge of Tomorrow. I think Edge of Tomorrow will break top five. I don't well, know if it's going to break number one, but I think it'll break top five. No, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll get number one. But no. Yeah, I could see maybe number three. Uh, I think it's going as high as number three, maybe even two. Considering Maleficent is number one, X Men is number two. Um, I'm gonna say, nah, yeah, I could see three. I don't know if it'll break t- two. Yeah, I mean, I, you never know though. It's getting, like you said, it's getting good reviews, so it's possible. Yeah, we'll see. But that's it for my end, though. Uh, all right, then moving on to my end with the DVD Blu-ray releases of the week. Uh, only two notable ones that are coming out this week. One of them I mentioned a couple weeks back: Lone Survivor. Uh, with Mark Wahlberg, uh, Ben Foster, Emil Hirsch, Taylor Kitsch, and the worst Incredible Hulk ever, Eric Bana. <laughs> um, uh, I've seen it. It is fantastic. It is an absolute buy on my list. Made about $125 million at the box office. 75% Critics' Choice Rotten Tomatoes, 89% for the viewer. Uh, it's a cast, too. Yeah, it's a definite buy. Um, except for Eric Bana. Except for Eric Bana, yeah. I actually don't mind him in some other films he's done. Just the Hulk was so bad. The he Hulk was good was... as uh, oh, what the hell, uh, Nero in Star Trek. Yes, yes, uh, in the reboot Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other one coming out this week that's worth mentioning is RoboCop, the reboot RoboCop with Joel Kinnaman, Gra- uh, Gary Oldman, Samuel L. Jackson, and Michael Keaton. Uh, that fit- do. Fifty-eight point six at the box office, forty-nine percent critics, Rotten Tomatoes, fifty-six percent viewers. So it's right in the middle. I've already seen it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It's a buy. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's a buy for me. A buy? Yeah, it's wow. a buy for me. Um, well, Lone Survivor, I didn't say anything. I'll, I'll say buy because I love Mark Wahlberg. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but with RoboCop, I'll at least give it a rent, and then you know after I watch it, maybe I'll update that to a buy. But I'll at least give it a rent. Yeah. So, uh, all right, that's going to wrap it up for the box office for this week. We're going to take our first break of the night. Uh, when we come back, we're going to recap one of the two interviews that we had uh, this past week, uh, as well as I'm sure we got we have some story to talk about. Uh, oh yeah, the MPAA rating. Yeah, I didn't right. read anything into it intentionally, so uh, we'll get. Yeah, into... there's a couple of them. I want to see if you can guess. I'll give you the year of the movie too. Okay, to make yeah. it a little easier. Well, I'm a movie buff, so I should be able to. Yeah, you, know, you should be good at this. Should be able to uh, be good at that. Uh, but yeah, we'll recap the interview. We'll talk about the MPAA ratings uh, as well as next level news. Uh, recap our big summer contest, and we will go from there. But we'll be back in a couple of minutes, and so just hang tight. We'll be back. You Big summer blowout. Hey all, this is uh, David Hoffman from NBC's Crossbones, and you are listening to Next Level Radio. Have fun. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberries. Is there someone else up there we could talk to? No, now go away, or I shall... Taunt you a second time. The 
little bit of Monty Python bringing us back from that music break. I love that movie. And the Holy Grail. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes, it's a fantastic movie. It's interesting coconuts migrate from my terrible British. They could be they could be carried. Yeah. I could quote that movie like all day. Oh yeah. So so easy. Yeah. Uh, but welcome back to the Next Level Showcast here on Next Level Radio. Uh, we just want to let you know, if you're listening to us in the Mixler chat room, you can chat along with us during the show. All you have to do is mess, make sure you are signed into the Mixler room. Uh, and in order to do that, if you have a Facebook, you can, connect right your, you can connect your Facebook page right to Mixler. That's the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, just sign up. It is a free page. Uh, and the advantage to it is you get to chat along with us while you're in there. So it's free. It's interactive. So you can chat along with us, join in on the conversation while we're uh, as I hit my headset on my microphone. Did you hear that? No, I didn't even hear it. Oh wow, okay. The shock mount must be working then. Either that or I was just talking <laughs> over it and I just wasn't even paying attention. I did it twice during this uh, show so far. So I mean, if you haven't said anything, it might, you know, my my equipment might be doing its job. Oh, I, my, I keep turning my head, and the, the headphones bang right into the pop filter. Oh, but well. apparently you can't hear it. So. It's working. Tell me if you hear this. I heard it. Okay, well that time I like it, but, <laughs> but last time it was a little more discreet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, that's like the the great advantage to our equipment is it's uh, a lot of people don't realize, including our guests, that we're in this we're not in the same room. Yeah, and. If uh, you saw our tweet or our Facebook post, we're going to play for you. Uh, we're going to recap our interview with David, or David, I must say. Yeah. David Hofflin. It's all right. His NBC's. agent called him David. Yeah. Or, well, the, the NBC rep. Yeah, yeah. the NBC rep called uh, him David. We're going to recap our interview with him. He's from NBC's Crossbones, which premiered this past Friday. Really good. I think it's gotten some good feedback, too. I haven't looked into it too much, but from what I saw, it looked like it was getting some good feedback. But... We'll actually play for you a little bit of the bonus uh, audio from that. You know, after we went, you know, after we brought the mics down and stopped, because it was a live interview. After we were done, uh, we were on the phone with him. I would say for almost another five minutes. I think another five ten minutes. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, he's a real funny guy. Uh, I mean, we might as well just go into the recap now, if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he's hilarious. He was. He was. He was. He was really funny. Uh, he's Australian, which was really cool because you can just tell you'll be able to tell when we play the clip of the interview for uh, that you you can hear that Australian accent. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no mistaking it. But it's it's really weird because I was telling some people about this before too. Is uh, I really didn't know what to expect when we interviewed him, especially after watching the show because you and I got the chance to watch the, like two or three episodes of the show before right. anybody else did, uh, which helped us out with this interview. Obviously, because we wanted to know what we were talking about when we when we interviewed him. Yeah. And he's not the nicest of guys in the show. And Yeah, exactly. So having that as my only impression of him, I was kind of a little weird going into the interview because I didn't know what to expect. Well, and even you had mentioned in an interview he was in Alcatraz and Touch. Now, I, I never saw Touch, so I don't know how his character was in that. But in Alcatraz, he had a very serious character as well. And he's a villain. Yeah. So, so I mean, we it's kind of... It, literally the complete opposite of maybe what you would think, yeah. especially maybe the Australian accent makes him sound more fun, but I mean, he's just a <laughs> funny guy. Yeah. He was a lot of fun to talk to. I can't. Yeah. I guess. I mean, when you think about it, do you really think dangerous when you hear somebody speaking an Australian accent? Like, are you scared of people? Um, no, because uh, the actors that I think of when I hear Australian accents, like I, I think Keith Urban, uh, you know, because he's Australian, yeah. and, and Nicole Kidman, right. yeah. Russell Russell Crowe. Well, he's New Zealand, but that's Mel Gibson. Big. So you Close might enough. so you might think racist. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, or, that's, or psycho. That's wrong. Sorry, Mel. Think he's like, a psycho, like he's listening. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, New Zealand, New Zealand, it's the same damn thing. I mean, don't tell anybody oh, from Australia. From I said there, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anybody from there that I said that. But it's to us, it's you know, it's pretty much the same damn thing. Yeah, same but accent. It's it's the same accent exactly. But I mean, it's uh, I'm trying to think of like anybody else from Australia who would make me Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. But I mean, yeah, I can't really think of anybody evil 
from Australia. Claire from Lost. <laughs> oh, she's certainly not evil. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Not like at so, all. it's almost disarming to speak to somebody Australian. Like you, you almost can't be. Like maybe they're just all nice there. Maybe. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, he was hilarious. He, um, yeah, I do he have a, a clip other than the bonus stuff. I do have a just a like I think it's like a minute long clip because we had um, compared the show to Pirates a little bit and, and had mentioned that unlike Pirates, like the show has Pir- a very Pirates smart, of the Caribbean to be Pirates of the specific. Caribbean. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it has a very smart language to it. Not that Pirates is dumb in any way because they most of them are good movies I'm not a huge fan of the third one but with with uh with crossbones it's completely different so here's him talking about the kind of differences and and the show's language i think that's one of the good the, the very good points about the show um because it doesn't treat the audience like they're idiots uh you know parts of the caribbean is a great family um movies but that's not what Crossbones... Crossbones isn't really even a kind of a pirate show. It's more of a spy uh, TV show. You know, it's a lot of cat and mouse games that's set in the pirate time. But it's... The, the, the language is nothing less than, I guess, eloquent, you would call it. Um, but I think it's written in a way as well where even if you don't fully understand what a word in the 1700s meant. There were sometimes I read the script and just went, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> it's still you still don't lose the gist of what's going on. You know, like even though they, they have a, a lot of back and forth arguments, especially with John and uh, Richard. Right. Uh, you know, you still you still it's interesting to watch because there isn't, as far as I know, there's nothing like that on TV right now um no, definitely it's, not. it's a language it's a language that is very very smart and i hope people appreciate it that's one of the things that i really liked about it um was the fact that it was different it's not just hey look there's a dirty pirate and he's gonna stab someone you know it, it's it's a lot more than that yeah that was a little yeah. more than a minute long it was a minute 20 was it okay it seemed yeah. like it seemed longer well, you have no concept of time. No, apparently not. That's why they invented that watch that literally just buzzes every five minutes. They have a watch that buzzes every five minutes? I don't even know that it's a watch. I think it's just this thing you put on your wrist and it just vibrates or makes a noise every five minutes so you know that it's been five minutes. That's stupid. And I'm stupid. not making that up. I know. Anyway, back, back to the interview. To, uh, <laughs> back to this. <laughs> Oh, I thought you had something to say. Oh, no, no, you had to no. say it was a smart-ass comment about it being more than a minute long? No, I have more to say about that interview, but I figured you were going to come back with something, and I just interrupted you. That was all. Uh, you did, but now I lost my train of thought. Uh, well, um, it, I'll, I'll go into it, though. I mean, we, we had an opportunity, like I said, to see a couple episodes of the show before it aired, and it, the show was fantastic, and I really hope, uh, especially after talking to him and how nice of a guy he was and how he wants to play golf with us, yeah, <laughs> which was really awesome. Um, he, I, I really hope this show works out for him because Alcatraz obviously didn't make it through the season. Touch, I think, was already, is already off the air. Yeah, uh, I really hope this one sticks for him. I really do, uh, for his sake, because he was a nice guy, and I want to see this work out. Oh uh, yeah, and John Malkovich is great too. I love John Malkovich as Blackbeard, aka Great Goatee. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, but no, I mean with. With the show, um, damn it, I had had it again and I lost it. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I was thinking about golfing. Damn it! Well, I mean, on uh, yeah, I mean, he. We started talking about. Oh, I think you asked him during oh. the rapid fire if what his favorite sport was, and he yeah, said yeah. golf. And he mentioned so golf, we started yeah. talking about golf and how we mentioned if he ever made his way to Philly, you know, he should play golf, and he said, yeah, he said he would actually play golf with us. Which, uh, yeah, which really if cool. he ever comes out here. If he ever makes his way out here, yeah. I remember what I was going to say. All right. Um, and it was it was involving the, the audio clip that was over a minute long that I just played. <laughs> it Shut was – you and I basically agreed with him that it is one of the positives to the show. That's the only thing that almost scares me. Like it, it, it is a positive in my mind, but not everybody might see it that way. You know what I mean? If they get – if some people want like some dumb show – to watch, they they might not like Crossbones. 
because it, it is a smarter show and it is very well written. Um, and you do kind of have to pay attention a little bit. And now, I, I love that about the show. And I think that's one of the things that really sucks about television nowadays is – and it was even brought up during the Kevin Murphy interview, which we'll get to a little bit later. But Kevin had mentioned in his interview how America nowadays has the shortest of attention spans. So right. like shows like Crossbones, which is a very, very intelligent show. You know, sometimes, like, these shows get skipped over and they get canceled because they don't bring in the ratings because they're probably too smart for other people. And these are the same people that are tainted by these stupid reality shows that are out. Yeah. You know, like the Kardashians, which we actually brought up the Kardashians. Twice. During the interview, I know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, these stupid reality shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and the, the Housewives shows and stuff like that. I don't watch any of them because I feel like I'm getting dumber, you know, yeah, just no, watching I mean... them. There's There's no plot. There's no intelligence to these shows whatsoever. I don't want to watch somebody else's life. I have too many things in my own life I have to worry about than watching what the hell's going on with Chloe and Kim. Yeah, exactly. But this show is very intelligent, and I think that's what TV needs more of is is intelligent shows like this. I agree, 100%. But when we were were off the air with David, we got to talk to him for a couple more minutes, and he was actually questioning – uh, us a little bit about the show and how we work and, and where we were based out of and, and how our equipment works and he was actually pretty surprised by uh, by by how what we by what we had told him about how we work things here and then a little bit later on we got him to record a promo for the show which I had just played during the last break and he goes into a little bit more depth. You'll hear the promo, and then you'll hear what he had to say about the promo afterwards. But this is bonus. Uh, this is bonus footage, a uh, bonus recording of um, off the air from the interview that we had with uh, David Hoffler. Are you playing it, Adam? What uh, is it playing? I don't. What do you mean? Uh, are you, you were pl- supposed to play it. Oh shit. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. I I forgot. I hit the. Damn it. Uh, Yeah, my apologies. I'm a moron. Done professionally. I'm sitting here. I'm like, what? What? What the hell's going on? Why isn't it playing? I I turned up the the (laughs) monitor to hear it. Uh, All right. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. I forgot. I have it on my end. Here it is. The uh, the bonus footage with David David Hofflin. All right. Cheers. Uh, Let's. uh... Now, is Next Level Radio solely for the Philly area, or is it around broadcast outside that? Well, we, it's, it's we an online Internet. it's an online station, so it can actually be listened to anywhere. Of course, yeah, I knew we've that actually already. My dad's actually, probably listening right now. <laughs> I think we've actually had people. Uh, I don't remember what interview it was for, but people have listened from Australia. I know that. Of course, they did. They got nothing else to do there as well. <laughs> So, I mean, plus every interview we do goes up for a podcast, so people can podcast it and listen to it, to, to, you know, to, whenever. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Sweet. So Wonderful. Whenever, now, are... I've, got a picture in, I've got a picture in my uh, of my head of where you guys are broadcasting from, uh, but it's probably totally different. Are you guys in an office, or are you in a basement, or a, or an apartment? Like, where we, are you guys broadcasting from? We are 60 miles apart in our houses. In no our, way! Our, yeah. Our office is in our houses. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is phenomenal because you sound like you're in the same room. Yeah, we get that. That's that was part of the purpose too, is the way yeah. we have everything set up. I mean, because we're about sixty miles apart, but we're each in our own office in our own house. But yeah, so uh, wow, just, just the way we do it. it, it cool. It, yeah, it works out. Yeah, it doesn't awesome. doesn't always fantastic. Doesn't always pan out for in person interviews, but at least for phone interviews, it works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Makes things a little yeah, difficult. Fair My wife made this nice <laughs> spread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's fair enough. Well, look, I'm just going to keep it in my head that you, you guys are together because that just makes it easier for me. It's, uh, otherwise, my brain's going to explode. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> fine. That's, that's good. Sweet. Hey, all. This is uh, David Hoffman from NBC's Crossbones, and you are listening to Next Level Radio. Have fun. I had no idea what else to say. That's, that's the first thing that came to my mind. No, that works. Hey, at least you added have fun. Most people don't do that, so. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Okay. We'll just well, stick to the, the basics. I was, I was going to say, like, get a dog up here, but then I thought that might be a little bit <laughs> too aggressive. What, what kind of dog do you have? 
We well, yeah, I got two dogs. Uh, Fox Terrier crosses. One of them is a. They're both rescues, so I'm not sure what they are, but they're one of them's a, a Fox Terrier cross with a Dachshund, we think, and the other one's a Fox Terrier cross with fucking Yoda or something. <laughs> like it's a weird looking, with massive ears. It's uh, that or a Chihuahua or something. We're not sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I have I yeah. have a, a French short haired pointer, which is like a German short haired pointer, but speaks a different language. I yes, guess, so. French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they bark in a ac- different accent. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, well, we really appreciate it, man. We appreciate you spending a little extra time with us as well. Um, and we yeah, can't absolutely. wait to see the rest of the, the show because we're not blowing we'll smoke yeah. up your ass. Like, it's actually a good show. Oh, good. That's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I haven't seen it, so I, I'm uh, I'm kind of I'm dreading it, but I'm excited. But, yeah, it's, it's a weird feeling because... Uh, Charlie we obviously wanted to do stadium. well, but... <laughs> what? Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I was wondering why I was doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean... Fair enough. All right, guys. Thanks yeah. for the Well, we, we haven't seen the end of the episode or the end of the season yet, but I'm going to go as best bold as to say we're going to talk to you again during season two. Yes. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and maybe we can do it on the golf course. Oh, that would be awesome. Be great. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Sweet. So, that right. sounds great. All right, guys. Cheers. All right, thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks. Yeah. All right, have a good one. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yep. Thank you no very much. No problems at all. So that just went to show you a little bit about his uh, his sense of humor too. Yeah. Especially when you told him like Charlie dies in this season. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's definitely a hilarious guy. Definitely. So. Uh, and I'm sure. Uh, and I, I love. And it's kind of funny. My fr- a friend of mine who you know um, had in college. He spent like a. a semester i guess abroad in australia and he came back saying cheers all the time i love it when australian people say it i hate it when american people say it. <laughs> the only cheers you should be talking about if you're american is the tv show or if you're making a toast yeah okay i'll give you that if you're making a toast you could say cheers i'll give you that <laughs> so. but no i mean a fantastic interview if you want to hear the whole thing and i highly suggest you do because you should really listen to all our interviews because they're all awesome. <laughs> well, uh, can... <laughs> let's, uh, most let, let's say 90%. Great. Yeah, I was going to say, most of them we have gotten pretty lucky with who we talk to, yeah. nice people. Um, just go to nextlevelradioonline.com backslash interviews. You can find them all listed there. Or subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes. I think if you just search for Next Level Radio, we, we are the first ones that pop up. Yep, first thing that comes up on iTunes if you search That's Next cool. Level Radio. Yeah. Um, it's funny, too, because one of the – I think what really made, gave me the idea that this interview was going to be great, especially from the beginning, is <clears throat> any time that we speak with uh, the interviewee before – we always go over a couple things with the interviewee before we do the interview. Like, uh, if our interview starts at 7.30, we're usually on the phone with them at 7.27, 7.28. Because uh, there's a couple things that we have to go over with them, obviously. We tell them we're not FCC regulated, so we can, you know, so they don't have to worry about if they drop a curse or the F-bomb or whatever. But the other thing that we do is we confirm how much time we have with them so we know ahead of time. And right. we were told, like, 15, 20 minutes with David, and Adam had... Uh, you know, Adam had said, you know, is that is that still the case? Do we still have 20 minutes with you? And his pretty much response was, you can have as long as you want. When we hear those words, like, I think we all re- we automatically know, all right, this is going to be a fun interview. Yeah, and we'll follow up with as many questions as we want to. Exactly. Because that's exactly what Bamford told us in an hour and eight minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, same thing with Pete, with Pete Mitchell. We went yeah, for, yeah, yeah. like, almost an hour with – actually, I think the only reason why we stopped with Pete was because we had another interview – like 20 yeah. minutes from then. Yep. Yeah, we had to get ready for that one. <laughs> so, but uh, but David was was definitely a lot of fun. Definitely check out the full interview on iTunes and on YouTube. Or if you want to find out, you can go to uh, our webpage, www.nextlevelradioonline.com, and just click on the Interviews tab. And yeah. it is right there as well. And watch Crossbones. Watch, NBC. yes. Yeah. Fridays De- at 10, 9 central. Yeah, definitely watch Crossbones. It was a really good show. Um. Do we want to talk about what our our other interviews are this week, or do we want to maybe reveal yeah. one of them? Or no, we can do them both, and then we'll just plug them again later, I guess. All right. Our our memory spans are short, so yeah. Um, our first interview, uh, they're both on Tuesday, right? 
Yes. Okay. One's at six thirty. One's at seven. So. So yeah. So back to back interviews. Uh, back to back. Yeah. And it really sucks too because I. I I know we're only going to get a limited amount of time with the first one, but I'm really looking well, forward to talking to him. Yeah, you know what the rep said, plan on 15 anyway. So I don't think we were going to be able to go much longer than that. Yeah, Which, that's what I thats what I mean. Yeah, I mean, if she had said, like, you know, you guys have as much time as you need or a half hour or something, I might have seen about maybe pushing the other one back. But <laughs> yeah, we only have 15, so it, it shouldn't – It sh- they should be fine. Uh, but our first interview on Tuesday, like I said, what we had mentioned earlier, is actually a reschedule. We were supposed to have this gentleman on probably about two months ago, actually. But he had some kind of emergency surgery come up, and he had to postpone all his PR appearances, including us. Yeah, I think, I think on his Twitter, back when I looked, he had mentioned something about like a motorcycle accident or something like that. I, I want to bring it up during the interview and see what I, you know, what exactly happened. Yeah, because uh, I know he tweeted about it. So, but we're going to be talking to Jimmy Simpson, uh, who you would know from, currently from House of Cards. You would also know him from Breakout Kings, uh, one of my personal favorite movies, which I, I hope to bring up to him. Maybe not personal favorite movies, but just a movie that I really enjoyed that I want to bring up is Knights of Bad Astem, mm-hmm. uh, which I definitely want to bring up to him in the interview if we have time. He was in Date Night. Uh, yeah, he was in Date Night. I think he's done a couple episodes of the TV show Psych. He's done a ton of stuff. If you've seen his face, you know him. You it's know always sunny in Philadelphia. That's right. He's one of the creepy, incestuous brothers. Yeah, Liam McPoyle. That's right. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because I, I had posted on my personal page that we were interviewing him. And in reference to It's Always Sunny, one of my friends had, had left a, an, um, a comment saying, make sure you ask him uh, – if he wants any milk or something like that, because <laughs> that's from It's Always Sunny. Yeah, I'm and sure that'll probably. Actually, yeah, I'm sure that'll probably come up at some point. Yeah, I, I just watched that epi- or the one episode recently, kind of to prep for this, because I had never seen Breakout Kings either um, when it was on, and I it always looked interesting. So I watched the first episode of it, and his character is actually really funny. Like it's. It's not like a goofy humor. It's like a drier humor, but it's really funny. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard that's actually a really good show. I haven't had the opportunity to see that yet either. Yeah, it was really good. And the one, the one other female in it's pretty hot too. Yeah. Uh, awesome. But the other interview we have, you know a little bit more about than I do. Yeah. Um, well, and, and maybe. Do you remember? Well, I'll get into this after I mention. It. It's going to be Notori Naughton. Um, she's in the upcoming series. Power, which is a 50 Cent produced uh, TV show, uh, premiering on Stars, I believe. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up. I think it's the seventh, Saturday the seventh. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check real quick. But anyway, uh, she's been in a bunch of stuff as well. She actually was in an episode of It's Always Sunny, oh. as in 2011, Shady, Shay Dynasty, or no Shady Nasty, or is it oh, Shay Dynasty? Oh God, that name sure. sounds so familiar from that show too. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't think I've gotten that far on the show, um, but she was also in the movie Fame. She played little little Kim in the movie Notorious. And do you remember the group Three LW, yes. Three Little Women? Yes. She was in that. Oh, so she's a singer too. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, she was. I think she sang in Fame. Oh, okay. Because that's like a musical. Uh, yes. Movie. Yeah, Fame is a yeah. musical. Yeah. So I mean, she's actually she's performed on Notorious as well. Oh, nice. Actually, on a couple of the, she's on both of those soundtracks. But yeah, so she started out as a singer, got into acting. But I, I remember 3LW back at like late 90s, early 2000s. So that would be cool. That'll be at 7. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much time we'll have with her, but those will both be live on our channel. So you yeah. definitely want to tune in. I mean, tune in at 6.30 and we'll take you right through till probably like 7.15, 7.30. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be a fun night. More back-to-back interviews. Um those are the I think they're the only interviews we have lined up for this week so far. So and far, I yeah. I mean, it's premiere week. Did we mention that? Yes, yes, we did. Okay, yes. yeah, premiere week. So I mean, I don't know how many we're, else we're going to be able to schedule because of the other shows coming in. But you know, if, if something pops up, we'll let you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you have your. Well, we'll get into premiere week a little bit during the next break. Yeah, uh, we'll, um, we'll talk but about that a little. Funny bit enough, later. Jimmy Simpson's from Hackettstown, New Jersey. Um, Naturi Naughton is from East Orange, New Jersey. Maybe so they know both, each other. Both East Coasters. He went to Bloomsburg. We'll have to see if they've ever... I don't know if they were in the same episode of Always Sunny or not, but uh, we'll have to see if they've ever crossed paths. Yeah. 
I, East Orange, I know, is North Jersey. I don't, I don't yes. remember. Hackettown's like central, isn't it? Uh, that I'm not sure. Yeah, I forget. It sounds familiar, though. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Bloomsburg, so check, I mean, out, pretty... check out the, Dave, the David, Loughlin, Dov, yeah, David <laughs> Hofflin <laughs> interview uh, on YouTube and iTunes. Definitely check out the full interview. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Um, but you, you had uh, something that you wanted me to try and play along with. And I'm kind of intrigued because I am consider myself a, a movie buff. So maybe this is something I might be good at. I don't know. Yeah, so this article I found this week, it's some weird MPAA warning. So the rating is like rated R. The warning is, you know, for nudity or violence or whatever. So um, like I'll just give you – the reason they did this article is because the new Godzilla one was rated PG-13 for intense sequences of destruction, mayhem, and creature violence. Um so that that's not that weird of one, but so I'm just gonna give you another example because this is from Three Ninjas Knuckle Up, and I'm not gonna <laughs> ask you this one because you probably never guess it. That one was rated PG-13 for nonstop ninja action. <laughs> yeah, that could have been a number of different movies. Yeah. Okay. So so you kind of get the gist of it, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So this one's kind of tough. I'll, I'll start. Yeah. Actually, let me start you out with an easier one. Hold on. Um, this is a 2004 movie, okay. rated R, rated R for R, graphic, rated R, R, <laughs> rated R <laughs> for dogs, rated R Beethoven. for graphic, crude, and sexual humor, violent images, and strong language, all involving puppets. Team America. Yes. Okay. See? There you go. That was an easy one. <laughs> um, this one, I'll, I'll give you another easier one. Kind of get you warmed up here, right. okay? So, this is a 2010 film rated PG for fantasy action, violence involving scary images and situations, and for a smoking caterpillar. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe they actually put that in there. <laughs> for a the smoking movie. caterpillar. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, this, see, this one could be anything. Um all right, so I'll just give you this one. Mean Girls in 2004 is rated PG-13 for sexual content, language, and some teen partying. Oh, yeah, that could have been... Yeah, that could have been that a bunch been anything. of um, How about... Okay, this one. Rated PG-13. This is a 2002 film. Ah, you know what? No, that one's, that one's a very general one, too. Um, <laughs> this one you'll never get. Nine, 1995. Rated PG for mild language and brief video images of violence and sexy dancing. 1995. Yeah, I'll give you a hint. It's, it was a book. Brief. What is it again? Say it one more time. Mild, mild language and brief video images of violence and sexy dancing. Brief video images. I really don't think you'll ever get Of violence and sexy dancing. 1995. I have no idea. That that was for the Indian and the cupboard. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Oh um, man. Okay. So some of these I'm gonna have to give you a little more hint for because they they're pretty general. So this one's 1994 uh, about a football team rated PG for kids' rude language and pranks. Little Giants. Yes. There you go. See. Uh, how about? I don't know if you've seen. I assume you've seen this movie. Uh, 2001, rated PG-13 for violence, extreme sports action, sensuality, language, and some drug references. The key thing being extreme sports action. I'll give you a hint. Triple X? Uh, no, I'll give you a hint. It involves... It involves roller skating. Roller ball. Yeah. That was yeah. In, no, no, that <laughs> was actually you. in the back of my head before you even said roller skating. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, this one came out in 99. It's a cult classic. Rated R for disturbing and graphic depiction of violent antisocial behavior, sexuality, and language. And, and the bolded part is that disturbing and graphic depiction of violent and antisocial behavior. 1999? It's very detailed. It's a cult classic. It's a cult classic. Yeah. I, I'm 19... pretty sure I've heard this described as a cult classic. 1999 American Beauty? I'll give you another hint now. Soap. Oh, Fight Club. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, that would probably qualify as a cult classic at this point. Yeah, I think so. Uh, 2004, 
it's a sci-fi thriller that combines two sci-fi thrillers. Rated PG-13 for violence language, and here's the bolded part. Horror images, slime, and gore. What year? 2004. 2004. Horror images, slime, and gore? Slime and gore. I'm not sure why they decided to put slime in the MPA warning. But, and and um, read, the, read the description to, to me one more time. Wow, the Colin, Sam, Colin Salmon's in that movie. Um, PG-13 for violence, language, horror images, slime, and gore. Do you know who Colin Salmon is? No. That's he why was, I just uh, he's, Yeah, he's Walter in, uh, in Arrow. Oh, Stepdad. 2004 yeah. horror movie. I don't know. It takes place in Antarctica. Does that help you? It takes place in... The Thing? No, no uh, Alien vs. Predator. Oh, those movies were horrible. Yeah, I don't think I ever watched that one. Um, 2001, PG-13 for epic battle sequences and some scary images. Um, 2001. It's not Braveheart. That was back in the 90s. <laughs> I got to read you that this next one's actually pretty good. I don't know. Uh, Lord of the Ring, Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, that's that's too Fellowship that's too generic. Yeah, epic yeah, battle sequence. I, I, yeah. I was hoping you'd get like if just say Lord of the Rings, I would give it to or the Hobbit. Yeah. Even. I wasn't even thinking. Um, this one's ninety-seven, rated PG for language and a mild birds and bees discussion. This is actually in the MPA warning: <laughs> mild birds and bees discussion. 1997. Uh, it's a adventure comedy crime is what it's listed at, and it stars Daniel Stern. Daniel Stern's in it. Um, isn't that the guy from? That's the. It's not. That, the there's, from yeah, there's no way that's rookie of the year. No. Uh, uh, 97. Now, Little Monsters was early trip. 90s. Think what? Camping trip. Bushwhacked. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So language and a mild birds and bees discussion. I've never seen bushwhacked. So me either. But I guess they talk about uh, the, the birds and the bees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another PG one. I think the PG ones are some of the funnier ones because they, it's like they need to make stuff up to put on there. <laughs> this is '96, uh, rated PG for elements of exaggerated meanness and ridicule. And for some mild language, the bold part being exaggerated meanness and ridicule. And I'll give you a hint. Uh, which? 96. Which? Um, it's not Harry Potter, is it? No. no. Um, I can't. Yeah, came it's, out after yeah in the 2000s. Um, yeah. 96, I don't even think what their names were even old enough to act yet. Um, 1996, exaggerated meanness. And what was the hint? Witch. Witch. It's not the witches of Eastwick. No. no um, uh, girl witch. Teen witch? No. <laughs> teen witch was well before that. And no, it's not Hocus Pocus. That was a guess in the... I, have, I don't know. Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus is closer than anything you've guessed, though. Um, it was Matilda. I never saw it. Really? Yeah, I've, I've, never, seen, Matilda. I've never seen Matilda. Well, you know, just be careful. Don't bring any kids because there's exaggerated meanness and ridicule. <laughs> why, why, like, exaggerate it? Like, how do you exaggerate meanness and I ridicule? I don't know. Um, I'll just run down a couple other ones because some of these I don't think you'd be able to guess. Uh, Try Clerks, Clerks 2 was – I was already reading that one. Oh, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't. Uh, Clerks 2 was rated R for pervasive sexual and crude content including uh, – boy – Maybe I should have seen if I could pronounce the word right. Aberrant, A B E R R A N T. Uh -huh. Aberrant sexuality. What the hell is that? I can, I, that can I tell you something about that movie real quick? Sure. I remember going to see that movie in theaters because I was super excited that Kevin Smith made a sequel to Clerks. Because I love mm -hmm. Clerks. I love Mole Rats, Dogma, Jane, Silent Bob, all of them. Clerks 2 was the first movie I remember in a long time sitting in the theater. And listening to some of the... Have you ever seen it? Uh, I don't think I've seen the second one. I've seen the first. There, I think the second one is better than the first one. Uh, just because... That's also the, black and white, right? The first one is black and white, yeah. The uh, second one's not? The second one is not. The second one is okay. not black and white. 
it starts black and white and it ends black and white, but it is not black and white the whole time. Uh, okay. Um, some of the dialogue in that movie is so... Uh, I can't even, like, it's so extreme. Aberrant? Like, extremely <laughs> racist. Oh, and really? extremely, but in a mocking way, like it's right, not right, intentionally right. racist. Like it's 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 mocking racism. Um, okay. And it's the first movie I remember in a long time sitting in the theater and looking over at my friend who I was with, and th- and just like, holy shit, did they really just say that? <laughs> <laughs> and, but I loved it. And apparently, you own Clerks too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm also being informed via the message board that I own the movie. Yes. So I guess I'll have to watch uh, it. You should watch it. It is really good. Yeah, rated R for sexual and crude content, including aberrant sexuality, strong language, and some drug material. Yes. Um, I've never heard of this movie. Cutie and the Boxer? Never. Rated R for nude art images. Interesting. Apparently, there was nude art in the movie, and it had to be rated R for that. I, I didn't know that that um, that was the thing. Me neither. Uh, Brick Mansions, the the, the uh, Paul, Walker. Paul Walker film. Yeah, yeah rated PG thirteen for frenetic gunplay, violence, and action throughout. Language, and then this this is the bold part: sexual menace. Where do they come up with these? <laughs> I don't menace? know. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> oh my god! Um, did I give you? No, I didn't give you this one. This is this is one you might know, so I'm not gonna. Uh, Ninety three. Okay. It's under the drug and alcohol uh, category, so it's rated rated R for pervasive, continuous teen drug and alcohol use and very strong language. So pervasive, continuous teen alcohol and drug use. It's not easy enough that you can just say drug and alcohol use. You have to put in pervasive, continuous, and teen drug alcohol use. Um. I have it narrowed down to one of two movies, uh, and I'm going lucky for you. I'll give you two guesses. I'm going to shoot 1993. I'm going to shoot for Half Baked. No. And the other one I'm thinking is Dazed and Confused. Yep. Should have gone with Dazed and Confused. Damn it. Yep. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh, I had them both, and I I couldn't think of it. There's. I gave you Mean Girls, right? Yes, yes, you gave it that one already. Some teen partying. Uh, how about this one? PG-13. I'm just going to go right to the bold one. Uh, humorous drug-related scene. So there's a humorous... <laughs> there's a funny drug-related scene in this movie. And what's 96. the year? 96. 96. 96. Uh, I'll give you a hint because it's kind of... Kind of general. Um, Chris Farley. And IMDb Tom, has Tommy it Boy? listed as 90... Uh, no, IMDb has it listed as 97, so it might be 97. Tommy Boy? No. Black Sheep. No. Um, uh, almost. Um, Asian. Beverly Hills Ninja. Yeah, There's a couple Asian people. I didn't want to say like karate. That would have given it. That's away. a great movie, though. Um, that's about it. I mean, there's there's another. Have you ever heard of the movie Jefferson in Paris? No. Me either. It's a '95 film, but the reason I'm mentioning it is because there was actually a puppets category so other than Team America this one was in the puppets category it was rated PG-13 for a mature theme some images of violence and a body puppet show so there must have been a body puppet show in this film and because of that they put it in the MPAA warning Monuments Men um, had some historical smoking so that was part of that one Interesting. that was the smoking category which I haven't seen that movie. So I haven't I'm, seen I'm it either. Sure what, I don't know what historical smoking means, but uh, they're smoking historical documents. They're lighting up the Bill of Rights. I hope that's not what it means. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> I was thinking like smoking cigarettes or something. Historically. Like, historically, yeah, and talking <laughs> about the famous presidents. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> so, the, those are some some interesting and like they're just. I think what's funny about them is they're just so specific. Like, you can't just say sexuality. You have to say sexuality involving, you know, parrots. Yeah, maybe they have puppets. to be. I mean... I doubt that. Yeah, I don't know. So, She's uh, not going to wait your dick day. Uh, but, all right, let's... Um, oh, we got to do Next Level News and stuff like that. Yeah, we do. I'm getting ready to take yeah, a break, do. and we got a bunch of other stuff <laughs> we still have to do first. So, you want to do next level news? Yeah, then? let's start next level news. All right. This 
is Next Level News. I think you're first, right? Uh, I think it doesn't matter. I think we both have the same amount of stories. But I'll start things off. Uh, sorry. Uh, Josh Brolin to play Thanos in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers sequel. Uh, nothing like waiting until the last minute since, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy comes out in August. Two months, yeah. Uh, but Josh Brolin has been tapped to play the villainous Thanos in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, sources confirm. Uh, Thanos, who first appeared in the post credit scene in The Avengers, is a major villain in the Marvel Universe and is also expected to appear in, in one, if not both, of the upcoming Avengers sequels. Uh, we're definitely tied to Avengers 3, director James Gunn recently said of the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy, which hits theaters on August 1st. So that's, I think uh, that's I think that's pretty good casting. Yeah, and so I'm wondering if, because I, I know he's not the main villain in... In Guardians uh, of the Galaxy? Guardians, but he makes an appearance, right? Yeah, it's probably going to be... I think, ooh, I think that's one of the main reasons why it could wait till this long, is because it's probably just going to be a quick scene. Yeah, and it could even be computer generated. You know what I mean? It might not even be him. It might just be his voice that they need right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, moving on, but kind of sticking with Marvel, Charlie Cox is going to be Daredevil in Marvel's Daredevil that's coming to Netflix uh, in 2015. Um, I'm not overly familiar with him. Yeah, me neither. Going to be a 13 episode uh, series. He's been in Boardwalk Empire and Stardust. I saw the picture that they posted with this article, and I don't think he looks the part, but I could be wrong. I mean... Did Ben Affleck look the part? I, I think Ben Affleck pretty did, uh, did look the part, um, but, I, I mean, I'm basing that. I'm basing my thoughts now on Charlie Cox on what I remember Ben Affleck looking like. So, How about John Hamm? John Hamm... Think is, he been a good Daredevil? John Hamm could have been a good Black Widow. I mean, <laughs> John Hamm is just awesome. I love John yeah. Hamm. Yes. That's true. We need to get him on sometime. That would be nice. That'd be awesome. He'd be so much fun to talk to. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Stephen King's It set to become two films for New Line Cinema. Uh, I hate Stephen, that movie. I love that movie. Uh, Stephen King's It. Uh, Stephen King's epic novel, It, is one step closer to getting remade for the big screen. The novel was previously turned into a 1990 ABC miniseries that had more to do... I'm scanning too quick. Uh, what year did the miniseries come 1990. out? 1990. Yeah, so I was three. I probably saw that when I was maybe like five or six, and I've hated clowns ever since. Uh, it's been in development at Warner Brothers for something like five years, but most recently signed on to a development as two separate movies. So yeah, I, that first movie, the original scare, scarred me for life. It a lot of people who it made a lot of people scared of clowns. Yeah, well, I mean, they're scary enough in their own right, and now adding that makes it worse. I, I don't think so. I love that movie. But I, love it, that movie I, I like the funny book. Who, you like what? I like the book. Oh, the book. Yeah. Well, it's funny who who played it. Tim Curry. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. Well, I mean, the movie, adult. that miniseries itself had a good cast. It had Tim Curry, John Ritter, Annette O'Toole. Um, yeah, I'm still never watching it again. Oh. It could have Mark Wahlberg and Russell Crowe in it. I would not. And John Hamm. And John Hamm. Um, so moving on, uh, LeVar Burton's Reading Rainbow Kickstarter that he, if, if you haven't heard about, he wanted to bring back Reading Rainbow, so he, he launched a Kickstarter. He raised $1 million in one day. I think uh, it was actually in, less than a day. It was 11 hours. Yeah. I mean, that is that is insane people love reading and but rainbows. i think i think this is a time to uh, i think reading rainbow i think we need a show like reading rainbow back now more than ever it was on for 20 years yeah and, years. and it stems back to my whole stupid reality concept it's, it, yeah. people are getting brain numb just from stupid television we need something back like this that just reinvigorates people's intelligence and and creativity yeah, and imagination Reading Rainbow. So it was a great show. I remember watching it as a kid. Yeah. And he was also Data on Star Trek. No, he wasn't. He was Jordy LaForge on Star Trek. He wasn't Data? No, that was Brent Spiner. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I Don't, I, don't mess I with the never, nerd. You'll get the nerd geez. horns. Sorry, I can never remember because <laughs> Data always had the visor on. No, that so was Jordy. Was... What? That was Jordy LaForge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting my characters mixed up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Dad is the robot guy. Yes, Dad, Dad is the android. 
and is not African American. <laughs> no, no, not no, at all. I'm good then. Yeah, George, uh, he's who I thought he was. Okay, like he is who I thought. You had you had the character names mixed up. Yes, you had the image of Jordy, but you were thinking data. Correct, data, data. Correct. not data. Yes. So. Uh, but last story of Next Level News is Will Hulu Resurrect Community? Uh, I have one more, buddy. Oh, you do? Oh, crap. That's right. I started. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good news today for human beings everywhere. Human beings being a reference from Community. Deadline discovered that Hulu has begun discussions with Sony Pictures TV about bringing the recently canceled Community back to life via the digital platform. Uh, so they're talking about – I know Netflix passed – but Hulu is talking about bringing community back, which I am thrilled. I really hope this happens. Really, As really a final this. season too, right? Not just streaming the old episodes. Well, they're still streaming the old episodes on there, but there's um, – I don't know if they're going to bring them back for just one season or if they'll continue after that for more. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Maybe they'll sponsor the movie. Uh, they, it might be. It might be a Hulu-produced movie too. That'd be cool. Six seasons and a movie. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so this is the last story. I got one more, Kate. buddy. No, you don't. No, I don't. I'm just... <laughs> James Cameron says, Pandora, the land of avatars, the tentative name for the new Disney attraction. So I don't know if you had heard about this. They're going to be building a, an avatar land in Disney World down um, in Florida. I did, and... In the section of Animal Kingdom. I don't even count uh, this story as the last story. I'm tired of Avatar. You don't like Avatar? No, I thought it was stupid. Really? It's Pocahontas. Just made CGI. Who's Pocahontas? Pocahontas. <laughs> he said Puka. I said Puka. <laughs> uh, but yeah, James Cameron recently said he believes it's going to be called Pandora, the Land of Avatar. It's supposed to open, I believe, in 2017. Uh, I'm sure that will get pushed back. But uh, the it's got, it, they want to open it between the release of Avatar 2 and 3. So construction apparently already began. And I, I don't know. Have you ever been to Disney World? I have. It's been about 14 years, but I've been there. Okay. We we took the tour when we were down there last time. I think – I can't remember exactly what – I believe what it is is they've only used one-third of the amount of property that Disney Oh, yeah. Owned. There's there's a ton of room down there that they still have left to develop. Yeah. And, I mean, I think one-third of it they're preserving, one-third they've used, and they have a, another – you know, an entire other third that they can do whatever the hell they want. And if you consider how big of an area the theme parks they have already yeah. take up and figure that's only a third of the land that they have. That's crazy. And if they only decide to use another third, it still doubles the size of that park. Yeah, and there's four parks, downtown Disney, and the parks are, I mean, Magic Kingdom's huge in itself they just extended that last year yeah and all of that is just a third of the amount of land that they have i uh, know that's it's, it's crazy it's it's going to get to the point where i mean you already need a full three or four days to see all the parks if not oh, longer yeah. it's going to get to the point if they develop all of that or at least the other third another third of it you're going to need a full week down there easily just to see everything just yeah. to see everything i mean if not, you, not you're going to need ones. multiple days in each park yeah, and I mean, well, that's the kind of the whole reason that that Walt went to Florida there, because where when, you know when he built Disneyland in California, there's not as much space, so he was looking for somewhere that had a lot of room. And obviously, uh, back then, Florida, and even now, I mean, if you look at a map, Florida still has a lot of undeveloped area. Yeah. So I mean, Disneyland's got its own zip code, zip code for for Pete's sake. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's crazy, man, what they got going on there. I'll get down there again one day. Um, but not to see Avatar's land of fantasy and ripped off stories. I mean, it's fitting. It's it's fitting that Avatar is going to Disneyland because, like I said, it's basically a rip off of Pocahontas. Just like, I, you just are like such a I know, sometimes. but just like here's another one. I'm gonna blow your mind with this one too, and a lot of people don't get it until I explain it. Two, both of James Cameron's top grossing movies. Avatar and Titanic are rip-offs of Disney movies. Pocahontas is... Avatar is Pocahontas. Titanic is Aladdin. And In a sense, but I mean... You've got a street rat 
living in the bottom of it. You've got the upper echelon right. who are but the royalty based of it. Of an actual event. And then you have a woman from the upper echelon falling in love with the street rat. You've got a guy who's against them in Aladdin, it's Jafar. In Titanic, it's Billy Zane. You've got somebody who advises them in Aladdin, it's a genie. In Titanic, it's uh, Kathy Bates. It's Aladdin on a ship. No, no. Cameron's a Cameron's I, a Cameron's a Walt Disney ripoff wannabe. I don't remember uh, a boat sinking in Aladdin though. Whatever. <laughs> I see the similarities. I'm not sure I can call it a ripoff, but it's not a stretch, Andrea. It's the truth. Yeah, I mean, I see similarities, but I mean, you know, so. not a lot of not a lot of people know that, you know, uh, Lone Survivor is actually a ripoff. I don't know. I got it's not a ripoff <laughs> of anything. It's a true story. So, <laughs> it's a ripoff of this guy who was the lone survivor of his crew. That's why it's called a true story, Adam. So is Titan. Well, and don't, Titanic's based off and, true events. And They're don't tell on. me it's a stretch, Andrea, because I'll go right into Twilight. Oh, jeez. Here we go. With Twilight. You don't want Let's that. Let's take a break. Hey, hey. Even Kevin Murphy agreed with me how bad Twilight is. Yeah, and we'll recap that <laughs> after this break. Yes. So that's why I said that. I was going to use that as a segue into taking a break. So we're going to take another break. Uh, in between, during this break, we are going to give you a movie title. It is a secret movie title. Only our live listeners are going to get email that live, to, uh, that live title. Well, we'll tell you where to send that live title once you hear it during the break. Uh, but we will take the break, and we will be back in just a few minutes, so stick around. Limp dick. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Marriage, that blessed arrangement. That dream within a dream. And we are back from that music break. If you are listening live, you got to hear the secret movie title during the break that you have to email to us in order to get an additional chance into our big summer contest. So, um, we have another interview to recap. But before we do that, actually just some breaking news that came in. I don't know if anybody uh, might be too, too old for some people, but other people not. Uh, Ann Davis, who played Alice on The Brady Bunch, passed away, unfortunately. 88 years old. Wow. So, yeah, it's kind of sad. So I mean, it's Brady Bunch is still even a little old, even for my, even for me. But I mean, I still watched it, not religiously, yeah. but I watched it. I knew who Alice was. I've, yeah, I was gonna say I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen enough of it to know who Alice was and to know who the rest of the characters are. So, Marsha, but that's Marsha, uh, Marsha. but that's uh, that's sad news. That is sad. News. Yeah, I agree. Um, another, but another news: Louis C.K. bought a house. Uh, oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we have, um, like I said, we had two interviews this week. One of them was David Laughlin. Hoffman. Laughlin. But Jesus, I can't Laughlin. talk. David Hoffman. McLaughlin. <laughs> You're confusing me even more. Knock it up. Darren McLaughlin. Uh, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. We're, we're finished. Let's wrap it up. No, I really want to. I have five million black pants at the <laughs> That was really no, loud. <laughs> I, I know. I, I actually really want to. Uh, I do really want to recap this interview because this was. Oh um, well, yeah. This was probably. You at, wet your pants during we, the interview. I almost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, this was one of those interviews that uh, I will honestly Not tell me. you we've had some fun interviews. Uh, this one to me is probably one of my personal favorites that we've done so far because of who it is, and because of how much of a fan I've been for so long. Um, when you have these people that, you, that you're a fan of, that you're big time fans of, you kind of have this fear when you talk to them or when you have the opportunity to meet them or talk to them. You kind of hope that they're what you imagine they're going to be. Like you really don't want them to turn around and you don't want them to be a, a big jerk because you know, it ruins everything you know, about your image of that person. Right. So I was really excited uh, to find out that this person was 
everything I had hoped for. He was very nice. He was funny, very engaging. We use that term a lot, but uh, I've been a fan of this gentleman for a while, but we had the opportunity to interview Kevin Murphy, who, if you don't know who Kevin Murphy is, if you've ever seen the television show Mystery Science Theater 3000, you know him. You know his voice. He was the voice of Tom Servo, one of the two robots in Mystery Science Theater. Uh, yes. Now currently a member of Rift Tracks. He's one of the creators and one of the current members of Rift Tracks. Uh, Kevin was a blast. So, um, I mean, I know I'm a bigger fan of Mystery Science Theater than you are, but you knew what it, you knew of it. You've seen it. Oh, yeah. I used to watch it all the time when I was younger. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen a ton of the episodes. Actually, I have every episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 on my computer. Have they ever done, and I meant to look this up, have they ever done the Michael Keaton Batman? Yes. Because it was on TV today, and I was watching it, and I was like, uh, this is... Oh, no. This, no, this they, haven't. they haven't. Um, they haven't. They did They did Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Okay. Um, and Batman and Robin... Batman and Robin was hysterical because of uh, how of horrible those, that movie was. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of those ones were. Yeah. If you're if you're not there. familiar with Mystery Science Theater 3000 or Rift Tracks, even basically what it is is it's um, these three guys are doing commentary during a movie. Uh, Mystery Science Theater was older, horrible movies, um, and Rift Tracks is the more current iteration, and it's a majority of current mo- current movies. But they still do some older movies as well. And they just do hysterical commentary, poking fun at the movies and things like that. Um, But we got to talk to Kevin. Uh, We reminisced a little bit about Mystery Science Theater and things like that. As well as the current iteration of Rift Tracks, the upcoming Rift Tracks Live that they do now. We talked about some of the past ones as well as some of the upcoming ones. And the Kickstarter program that they have going on right now to raise money to do bigger movies than they've done. I mean, they've done... um, I, he mentioned Twilight because he has the a hatred for that movie just as much as I do. And it's it's funny because that will probably be the only way I will ever watch those movies is with the riff commentary added to them. Yeah. Well, and that's what I I even mentioned during the interview. Like that's some of the – like when, for Mystery Science Theater at least, when they were doing those movies, like those were movies I would never have watched otherwise. Yeah. Because they're just terrible horror films. Yeah, exactly. Uh, terrible like science fiction movies and things like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it gives you an excuse to watch a movie that you've always thought was terrible and never wanted to watch. It gives you an excuse to watch it. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple clips from the interview. This first clip is basically we, we had talked about Mystery Science Theater and, and how I had discovered Mystery Science Theater. And this first clip is Kevin discussing uh, basically the origin a little bit of Mystery Science Theater 3000 and, and how it got started. I can safely say that there was nothing like it on television at the time. Um, I mean, I remember uh, one of the inspirations for the show in the first place um, with Joel was uh, we all grew up with these things, these hosted movies, creature features, or Elvira. Um, In Chicago, we had this guy named Sven Gulli who would come out. And they wouldn't take any of this stuff seriously. And uh, and they would host the show. And then Joel just sort of said, well, why don't we just bring that one step further? and bring the movie host into the theater to watch the movie with you. And that's simply what it was born out of. And what it generated into was something that everybody does anyway, which is talking back to your TV set. Yeah, and that's basically pretty much with the um, with the Rift Tracks and what the Mystery Science Theater 3000 was, is it's these three guys. Well, or in the case of Mystery Science Theater 3000, a guy and two robots. Right. Who basically just talk back to the movie the whole time. And they're hysterical. I mean, I've seen so many of them. I've been to these Rift Track Live events. Uh, I will continue to go to them. And it was definitely a big honor for me to talk to uh, talk to Kevin. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, even it's somebody that like has been a part of pop culture for decades. Yeah. Exactly, um, and that kind of goes a little bit into the second clip that we have of Kevin. Uh, you you asked him uh, what it was like for him to uh you know to be part of uh, people's growing up to be part of people's families you know but from people who got to grow up watching Mr. Science Theater with their parents or things like that you asked him what it's like for him to yeah how he feels about that and this was his response you know it's really cool it's it's uh, sort of humbling it's 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 freaky and wonderful 
Because I grew up with, I call them pajama shows. You know, you'd come down the uh, stairs on Saturday morning before your uh, dad would make you go out and mow the lawn, and you'd sit in your pajamas and watch these dumb shows. Or you'd stay up late and watch and do the same thing. But right. I, they're pajama shows. They're just things that you'd, you know, you'd goof off to, and you'd remember them, and they'd have this lasting impression on your childhood, probably more than just about any other programming. So <clears throat> that's what... That's what mystery science theater is for a lot of people, and that's that's really kind of cool. And and Adam, to hear you say that you uh, started watching with your dad or with your parents is is so great. We I, I keep on meeting people when we go to events and conventions, and uh, and we do these live shows who are saying, "Yeah, I started watching it with my father." And now the freaky thing is, I'm starting to hear, "Yeah, I started watching it with my grandpa." <laughs> yeah, that just shows you how long it's been. Yeah, it's been I, on the air. Well, I think the show's been around for I think almost twenty years. The original? Yeah, the Mystery Science Theater uh, MST3K. I think it's it's been about twenty years since the show uh, first premiered. Yeah, I think eighty-eight it says. Yeah, so um, you know the show's come a long way. They're still doing it now, and it's it's still fantastic. So we definitely encourage you um, to check them out uh, at rifttracks.com. Tracks is T R A X. Uh, check out some of the samples that they have there and guarantee you'll probably end up buying one or two of them. Uh, and definitely look into the Rift Tracks live events. They're a lot of fun. They're just a fun night out. They're usually on Thursday nights. The, they're doing one for, uh, for Sharknado July 10th and July 15th. Uh, they have one for the 1998 version of Godzilla coming up in August. And then they're hoping to raise enough money to do Anaconda in October. But And they're raising money through their through the Kickstarter program that I had mentioned before. And you can find all the information on that Kickstarter program, um, that Kickstarter auction right on rifttracks.com. Yeah. And you can follow them on Twitter. Uh, Rift tracks is at Rift tracks. That's easy enough. Um, and Kevin is at KW Murphy. Yeah. And us, we're at NXT level radio. Exactly. Uh, but on, <laughs> you know, on the subject of us, this is premiere week, as we had mentioned earlier. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with what that means, that means that this is the first week we are adding. <laughs> really? I thought I could use some music in that. It was either that or The Godfather. I figured this was like they premiered Simba to yeah. everybody. So. This is probably a little better. Uh, Premier week music. Adam and I are premiering, or each premiering, new shows on Next Level Radio this week. So we are adding additional programs starting this week. Uh, Adam, start off. The, you're starting yours on Wednesday. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time will be the premiere episode of Primetime Fantasy Football. It'll be myself and my friend Steve Richards uh, talking some fantasy football. This week we're going to talk about uh, the NFL draft was, I think, a couple weeks ago. I don't remember exactly how long. It was recently. Uh, but we're going to we're gonna recap that, see if there's anybody who was drafted that might make an immediate impact on your fantasy team, as well as free agency and stuff like that. So this week will be the first episode, um, and I believe we are going to start going weekly in July. So this will be the first episode. The next episode will probably be early July, and then we'll start going weekly. And then, your, the and then your show is going to run weekly all throughout the, the football season? Throughout the football season, yeah. Okay. Um, and I think yours is going to be podcasted too, I believe. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it, we're, we have to work out, you and I have to figure this out if it's easier to, we, it, we might have to put it on its own instead of the next level radio one. I think it would probably make iTunes. more, I think it would probably make more sense to, to start its yeah, own probably. And, and keep it separate from the show cast and the interviews and such. Uh, not a big deal. We know how to do that now so we can get that started. Uh, but then on Thursday, I premiere my new show, which is All Request Radio Rock, and it's basically exactly what it sounds like. 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time till about 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's basically just going to be me on the air for about three hours, just playing some cool-ass rock and roll for you. Uh, and I'll be taking requests all night. We'll be doing some music blocks, probably one an hour. Uh, we'll take one artist, and we'll play four songs from that artist. Uh, and hopefully some of those songs in those four in that four song block will be we'll try and put some deeper cuts in there too some songs you might not have heard by that artist that are really enjoyable uh, we'll do requests all through the night we might do some double shots and things like that but it's basically just going to be some all request music for a couple hours every Thursday night you'll be able to uh, to request songs in multiple ways you can post on Facebook you can tweet us um, 
It'll probably well, that'll have a, be weekly starting this week? That will be weekly starting this week. So every okay. week starting this week, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you'll be able to listen in. And it's just a cool program, you know, you can put on in the background if you're cleaning your house or something yeah. like that. Just listen to some cool tunes and, and even make some requests. Dog. What was that? Or washing your dog. or Washing your dog. I don't have dogs. Off a Disney movie. I don't have dogs. I have cats. Washing your cats. I don't watch my cats. They lick themselves. Uh, well, uh, so, but, <laughs> um, but those are the two. Uh, yeah, those are the two shows for for premiere yeah, week this week. Big week this week. So we yes. got the premiere week, and then we got the two interviews on Tuesday: Jimmy Simpson at six thirty and Terry Naughton on, at seven. Yes. So big week. Very exciting. Busy stuff. week. Yes, busy week for sure. Um, and of course, the showcast uh, every Sunday, six o'clock Eastern Standard Time to eight o'clock. Yeah, where you'll hear music such as <laughs> the Circle, Circle of, of Life. life. <laughs> big I finish. I want to watch the Lion King now. <laughs> Get ready for the big finish. I love this part. The end. The end of this is, is the best. <laughs> yeah, it, that's we epic. could have just ended the show right there. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> okay, see ya. <laughs> see ya that's it. Week. Have fun. Uh, well, we are – we're not running out of time. We have a good 20 minutes left. Yeah, we left. still got some time. Um, but I found, this, I found this article 10 minutes ago. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Means I don't know I what it is. To, well, I didn't want to talk about the guy who ordered a $54 Frappuccino at Starbucks. No, that's, that's just stupid. Just a waste of time and money. Yeah. This is an article about the best and worst colors to wear at a job interview, which I find interesting because I, I've always known – or I've always heard at least that you're not supposed to wear red. Really? Because I've worn red to interviews and I've gotten those jobs. Really? Yes. Maybe they just like to hire pricks. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, well, if that's the case and you like working with them. <laughs> I do. There you go. Um, conservative colors such as black, blue, gray, and brown seem to be the safest bet for the first time, whereas colors more you know signal more creativity like orange might be too loud. But here, here are some... Um, these are hiring professionals who part- participated in a survey. So this is how they view different colors, okay? Um, and I, some of these I've worn, some of these I haven't. I mean, I usually, do you always wear a suit and tie? Uh, at least a shirt and tie. Maybe not a suit as in like a jacket, but at least a yeah. shirt and tie. Okay, yeah. And and the shirt color is what I, I'm thinking when, when I read these colors, because usually well, the shirt color is kind of what I base off of. Well, if somebody's wearing red pants to an interview, yeah, I would probably be turned off by that too. I agree. Black pants or, you know, if it's a hot or, day khaki or pants. Or khaki pants, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so black apparently signifies leadership. I don't know that I've ever worn, like, a black button-up. I have. I don't think I ever have to a job interview. I know I own black oh, button-ups, yeah, and I have worn them. Yeah, I have one, but I don't think... Usually I go with, like, a a less dark... Like, a little, little brighter of a color. Not, yeah. You know, not, like, fluorescent orange, but... Yeah, uh, I have so, I have I have two shirts that are my go to shirts when it comes to like important events like interviews and things like that. What, what um, color are they? I'll tell you what they mean. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, one of them is red. Red. Okay. And, and I usually uh, when I usually wear that, I usually wear that with like a black tie. See, or, red signifies power. Okay, and I usually wear that with like a darker colored tie, like a black tie or, or or something like that. Usually a black tie with with a red shirt. That signifies racism. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're such a jackass. Um, and my other, the other color shirt I usually wear is like a baby blue. Fuchsia. Puce. Okay, well, it, it tells me blue. It doesn't tell me baby blue. Um, baby blue probably means you're a woman. Blue means you're a team player. <laughs> uh, this, blue is one of the best colors to wear on a job interview because it uh, exudes trust and confidence. What color is this? Blue. Okay. And I've worn I've worn like a, a blue before, like a more like a. It's not like a royal blue because that's a little too bright, but it's like a, a slight. It's not sky. It's not like baby blue. Yeah. But not like Carolina blue. Um, What's wrong with Carolina? Yeah, I've never blue? worn nothing. I've never. But that, I'm just saying that's that's not what the color it is. Gotcha. Uh, we were actually at a wedding last night, and I wore the blue shirt to that. Nice. I have confidence and power, or confidence and. Whatever the hell it said, uh, but back to red uh, and power. See that? Like I had heard that can be good and that can be bad. I guess it all depends on who you who you talk to. 
Yeah, it conveys I, I, passion and power is the best color to wear when you're trying to persuade or impress someone. Yeah, I think it's all up to the person. I think it's uh, up to the interpretation of the person who's possibly interviewing you. Right. You know, and, he, they right. may think of powerful as a good thing for the job. They might think of powerful as a clash. Right. And I've worn gray. I know I've worn gray. So gray says uh, logical and analytical. So it makes me look smart, apparently. So your shirt uh, lied. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, it communicates independence or isolation. doesn't have to be a bad thing as long as you show that you're confident. Yes. So if you're wearing gray and you're, like, sitting in the corner crying during the interview, you're probably not going <laughs> to uh, Okay. Uh, I had a – sorry, I had a clip and I couldn't find it quickly. No. Uh, Way to blow I don't think it I've ever worn white, but white says you're organized. I don't think I've ever worn white to a job interview. Yeah, I don't think I have either. Um – brown i don't even think i own a brown button up i know i don't that means you're dependable though i the, just i i can't see wearing brown with black pants it just, it's too many dark yeah, you look like a ups delivery guy yeah exactly not that there's this anything earth. wrong with ups delivery guys no they're very nice this earthy color means warmth safety reliability and dependability apparently especially now that um, i have amazon prime again and i want to piss off the I UPS don't offend guy. your ups delivery yeah guy. Uh, and these th- these four colors I don't think I've ever worn. Uh, green, yellow, orange, and purple uh, means you're creative. Green I have worn. Uh, orange and purple I have not. Well, okay, see, see some of this, it's hard. Because, like, a brighter green, like a lime green, I would say is probably a no-no. But, like, yeah. a darker green, like a forest green, well, that's is what probably is. okay. That's yeah, that one's, I would think that's probably okay. Because this says these louder colors communicate that you're fun and and attract attention. So, like, a, a forest green, I don't say, is a loud color. No, no, not at all. Or um, like a lime green. Or but, like, I mean, as far as... I go as in a, there wearing, like, uh, highlighter yellow. Well, when they mention, like, loud colors, I mean, what if you went into a job interview wearing, like, a bright Hawaiian shirt? What would that say? Depends upon your pants. <laughs> really? What if, yeah, they were, what if they were cargo shorts? Okay, see, then you, I think you're that just not would, taking it seriously. I, I think that would be you're fired before you're even hired. Yeah, that would be get out of my office. Like in yeah. uh, Step Brothers. Uh, Step Brothers, yeah. <laughs> shut, shut your mouth. <laughs> you shut your mouth. Um, but yeah, purple, I don't own a purple. I don't own an orange uh, button up. I have a gold one. I have worn gold. I There's have, a difference between I, yellow and gold. I have a yellow button up, but it's not a dress shirt. It's more just like a casual, like, short sleeve button up for, like, okay. a regular, you know. Like Does it have, like, the soft collar? Yeah, soft collar. It's got stripes to it. It's it's more. It's weird because, like, it took me a while to get comfortable wearing yellow at all. Yeah. And, and now I'm fine with it. Like, but you still won't watch me. You still won't catch me dead wearing pink. Now you're a regular big bird. Yeah. Right. But I have never worn pink, and I probably will never wear. Pink. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I will either. Um, but yeah, I, like the soft collared ones, I usually i I won't wear because it's such a pain in the ass to get a tie in those. Yeah, I'll I'll wear them to work once I have the job. Yeah, because you don't need not, a tie or anything like that. But yeah, not 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 the interview. No, not the interview. But yeah, it doesn't say. I don't see anything for gold. I'm kind of curious because I know I have a gold button up that I've worn. Gold, they hire you on the spot. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Or gold, they call the cops. <laughs> yeah, why would they call the cops? I don't know. No. Why would they hire you on the spot? Uh, because it's just that powerful of a color. I guess, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'd probably put that in the category of maybe like a gray. Maybe. It also know. depends on the shade of gray. Yeah. Like I have like a silver shirt. Uh, uh, when I think gray, I think bland. I, I'm silver and gold. Apparently. Just kind of like blah. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's interesting. I, I would have liked to see a few more colors on this list. Yeah, Maybe or like at least or at salmon. least different shades of those colors. Yeah. Like, it's hard to distinguish like a bright blue or a darker blue. Yeah, there's like a 50 shades of gray, and I mean, they didn't break down any of them. Yeah, like I, I can't imagine each shade of blue meaning the same exact thing. Like I'm going to think something different if I see a guy coming in wearing like a – like I said, like a baby blue shirt is compared to like a dark blue, like navy shirt. You're a homo. There's nothing wrong with my <laughs> baby blue shirt. I, I right? don't think there is, but it's just the fact that you're calling it a baby blue shirt, I think. All right, light blue. 
Yeah, that's better. Okay. Go with that. Gotcha. When, when you, if you go on a date, you know, and she says, "Oh, I like your shirt," and you say, "Yeah, it's my favorite baby blue shirt." You might want to go with it's my favorite light blue shirt. Look, there's nothing wrong with it being a baby blue shirt. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's um. Uh, you want to weird of the week it up? Yeah, let's move on to the weird of the week. And now the next level showcast presents the weird of the week. Go f*** yourself, San Diego. <laughs> the Word of the Week this week is brought to you by Fuchsia, which I think is a type of purple. Gold shirts. Gold shirts. Uh, cross, first story, cross-country flight is diverted after a dog poops. I this heard is, about uh, this. I think this is stupid. This is out of Philly. A cross-country flight had to make an unscheduled landing when a service dog pooped twice in the aisle, sickening passengers with the odor. U.S. Airways spokesman Andrew Christie said May 28th, uh, U.S. Airways flight from L.A. to Philadelphia had to make an unscheduled stop in Kansas City. Uh, apparently, this was a rare and unfortunate situation. The flight continued after the mess was cleaned up on the ground. The passengers and service dog were rebooked on another flight. Uh, this apparently is rare, but dogs do occasionally get sick on planes. Yeah, but That's usually, it, it's not, it's a rare occurrence, because most of the time, dogs are in carriers. Yeah, most of the time, you know, you don't have a service dog on the Exactly, on the yeah. Yeah. That, that would suck, though. Could you imagine? Dog shit does stink. Yeah. Especially in a confined area like that. Yeah. And if... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all that's all that needs to be said about that. Um, second story, Alabama caveman arrested allegedly sneaking drugs into music festival. Uh, a music festival attendee was picked up on drug possession charges by Alabama police earlier this month. Um, apart from sporting a shaggy mop and a full beard, this gentleman was wearing a hairy vest and that closely matched the rusty hue of his locks when he was arrested. He basically, if you see the, the picture, he looks like he's dressed as a caveman. I don't know where he would have found this vest, but it's literally like a furry vest that looks like something a caveman would wear, like the Geico guy. Yeah. Um, apparently, the smoking gun is the... who came up with the Alabama caveman... Uh, name for him um, why he was rocking this look uh, they don't know yeah, I, I have no idea apparently not uh, next up Oregon driver who held his breath in tunnel faces criminal charges did you hear about this one no I, I don't think I have uh, a 19 year old faces criminal charges in Oregon after crashing his car injuring himself and three others the reason is because he passed out behind the wheel while trying to hold his breath yes. through a nearly 800-foot-long tunnel. I did hear about this. Yeah, so if you're – I don't think I've ever done this as the driver because that's just stupid. Um, I've I, done it, but I – You're reckless. No, I'm not reckless. I just know when to open my mouth and breathe. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not stupid enough to hold my breath the entire time. Yeah, so I guess he held it so long he passed out and caused an accident yeah. and injured some people. He's lucky nobody died. Yeah, exactly. That's the only explosion thing I have. I wish I had screeching tires. It would go better. Well, look it up. Um, but that, that's too late. I'm too. I'm too far gone. This I didn't mean for right now. <laughs> for the future. Well, how often do the teenagers pass out holding their breath in a tunnel? Yeah. The the one I always did it on at least is the uh, Pocono. Lehigh Valley. Yeah. Yeah, Lehigh Pocono, Valley tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's I, usually I the one I do it to. Is that one? I don't know how long that one is. 800 feet sounds about right, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but I've done it. I've I've held for my the breath the entire time. time. Yeah. Driving? Driving. You're dangerous. I know. I just know to open my mouth and breathe if I feel like I'm getting ready to pass out. Dangerous, man. Yeah. But that does it for the week. 
So Ben's, Ben's danger. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get ready to wrap things up. A couple things we're going to recap before we uh, before we head out. Be sure to go to our YouTube page and subscribe to us on iTunes. Check out both our, our David Hofflin interview and our interview with Kevin Murphy. Uh, definitely both. Uh, I, I think this was a highlight. Two great interviews that we had this week. Uh, they were both a lot of fun. So definitely check them both out. Yep. Um, don't forget our big summer contest that's going on right now and the multiple ways that you can enter into that. Uh, here's how it works. If you want to enter into our big summer contest, first off, the prize is about a $400 value. It is a top-of-the-line Blu-ray player and 10 Blu-rays of your choice from the list that we provide. Um, that's, that's the highlight. That's the asterisk. Uh, we'll give you a list of about 50, 60 Blu-rays that you can choose 10 from. So, you know, 10 Blu-rays to get your Blu-ray collection started. Uh, if this is the first Blu-ray player that you're going to own. So you can have the opportunity to win that Blu-ray player and 10 Blu-rays of your choice. If you don't live in the area, in the Philadelphia area around us, do not worry. We will ship it to you. It is all part of the contest. Uh, but here's the thing. Oops. <laughs> We're still in the weird of the week. Um, in order for this contest to go active, uh, it's going to run until August 31st. Uh, by August 31st, we have to have 750 likes on our Facebook page. If we reach 750 likes by August 31st, we will draw a name and that person will win uh, that prize. Here's how you can earn entries. In- Here's how you can earn entries into the drawing. Uh, first off, like us on Facebook. That will get you one. Like us on YouTube or subscribe to us on YouTube. That'll get you another. Mixler. Subscribe to us on Mixler. That's third. Um... Uh, follow us on Twitter at NXT Level Radio. That's five, or is that four? I forget. Um, I Facebook, Facebook, Mixler, YouTube, <laughs> Twitter. That's four. Um, subscribe to <laughs> Shut up. subscribe to us on iTunes. That is five. Um, uh, leave us a review and ranking on iTunes. That is six. That's nine. Shut up. So there's six opportunities right there for you to get into this contest. We have additional con- additional ways every week that you can get entered. If you listen to us live, we will give you a secret movie title every week between now and August 31st. And if you email us that title, you will get it in. But you have to listen live. That will, that will not be going into the podcast. Uh, throughout the week, now that Adam and I each are starting our own new shows this week, I'm sure we'll each have our own ways during the shows to earn additional entries. So you can listen to uh, the other two shows uh, throughout the weeks and throughout the summer. We'll give you additional ways. We'll post stuff on Facebook to give you additional ways, possibly like movie trivia, things like that. So there are multiple, multiple ways for you to earn more chances into this drawing. Uh, but I think that's about it. Uh, we have two interviews coming up this week. Um Jimmy Simpson and what's her name? Naturi Naughton. Naturi Naughton. Um, both are on Tuesday. Jimmy Smith or Jimmy Simpson at six thirty and Naturi Naughton at seven. Both live on Next Level Radio, so be sure to tune in to both of them. Check us out on Twitter at NXT Level Radio. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash next level radio online, and check out our webpage, www.nextlevelradioonline.com. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube or on uh, YouTube and on YouTunes, iTunes. God damn it. <laughs> iTunes, YouTunes, we tunes, we all tunes. <laughs> I think that's it. Unless you I have anything. You scream, we all scream for ice. Unless you have anything else. No, listen on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes. And next day. Yeah, listen Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. Tuesday for the and interviews. Subscribe and rate. To Leave you, us ratings. To YouTunes. Good ratings on yeah. iTunes. Yes, yeah, they have to be favorable ratings. Yeah, if you don't order. like it, if you don't like the show, just ignore it. Don't. There's no such thing as ratings on iTunes yeah. if you don't like the show. Yeah, if you don't if like, you do the, like show, the show, leave us a good rating. So, all right, that's it. Oh, my God. That's all I got, too. It's hot in this room. <laughs> yeah, so let's get things wrapped up so you can open up your windows and turn your fan back on and everything, too. Yes. So, uh, But that's going to wrap it up for Adam and I. Make sure you listen to us Tuesday for our live interviews, Wednesday for Adam's show, and Thursday for mine. Until then, we will – and then, obviously, next Sunday for the Next Level Showcast. Until then, we will see you around the bend, guys. Take care and oh, have a great week. Wait. Huh? Sorry, I, I, I forgot. Um, also, keep an eye out this week. We will be posting the Will You Bank interview. Oh, that's right. That's right. We, we've been holding on to that for a while. 
Yeah, in two weeks, uh, two weeks from this past Friday, the signal is going to be released in theater. So we had to wait to um, to post it because the interview was like a month ago almost. Yeah. Uh, so on, I believe Thursday, we're going to try and post that for you to to listen to and and check it out. So um, you know, so you can get a little bit of a preview of the signal when it comes out in a couple weeks. Yeah, and we'll recap that next week on the show too. Yes. So. And I'll give a I'll give a snippet of a review. Um, I think we're gonna I'll put a full review on the website. But okay. Yep, that's sounds, it. Sounds good. I just remembered that, so, so I want to mention it real quick. All right. Well, then, until uh, we see you later on down the road, remember, again, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week, new stuff that you can listen to us live on the station, obviously, next Sunday at 6 o'clock. Uh, until then, guys, take care and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Later. Well, I can't do any more damage around this popsicle stand. I'm out of here! Bye, you two crazy lovebirds! Hey, Rugman, ciao! I'm history! No, I'm mythology! Nah, I don't care what I am!